It's something I think is <laughs> gonna happen, right? Test rev limiter. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm it's excited for that. kind of happens on most vehicles, I guess, that we've driven or whatever, but. Guys, I gotta show you something really bad. I made this at like three in the morning. Right, Tony? <laughs> I don't remember. I actually thought it was a couple evening thing, but we were kind of, <laughs> what I remember is we were adding spacers to keep getting our height. So because our angle, we realized, first we had the seats really flat, and then we realized we need to lean them back so we get our headroom and for comfort, because we're sitting so low. So we have a lot more tilt. So I think we kept adding them to get the tilt, but I don't know. I, I feel like you're, you're quite correct. Hey. Do you want to share what you're working on or is that top secret? Uh, I am just trying to figure out why the RCM is not communicating. So we're reprogramming the gateway module that we tried, which I don't think that was going to be the problem because I did find two wires that I think need to be connected for communication on the strength control module. So we'll see if we have an update on that later tonight. Does that give us a spare restraint control module for when we drop it? <laughs> we didn't, we, no, it's gateway module. Gateway, we didn't order okay. a spare restraint module because it was too expensive. That's right, 70 bucks, and we no, were thinking... No, they were 200 for use. And we were thinking 70 initially, right? <laughs> I was hoping cheaper than that, but yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. And so, no, the gateway module was something like 40 bucks new, so that one wasn't a big deal. So you want to show us those two wires that we removed? So like we do only have three wires to our restraint control module. Um, that's all, everything else goes to stuff. This is a power wire or like ignition sense, and these two are communication. So I followed them, and they do end... I think we must have missed this, this guy right there right yeah so it's these two braided or uh, twisted wires here and then so i got to figure out where in the harness i can splice it to because i can't find the other end of this connector so do they power it up is that what they're doing no it's communication so it, it helps it talk to other computers so this is the power and then it grounds through the oh so you kept what the... you thought was just the power but we got to get communication as well kind of yeah. like our well, instrument I cluster meant to keep the communication but i guess we made a mistake on that one cool yeah I probably did the cutting, so. Uh, <laughs> we oh, we got our yeah. computer boss here, guys. Yeah. Uh, he, he's he's off, off camera because yeah. he's too important to be on screen. But, yeah, uh, he's, we'll kidding. let you guys guess who he is. He's pretty important. Um, but yeah, he did help us out with the, some of the scan tool equipment. And so yeah, we've got it. Uh, the clutch isn't hooked up yet, but we can push the button here. And we just got it fired up here. So fire it up again for you guys. So, how do you start a TV sales pitch? How does the Sean Wall guy do? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Something like... Um, well, you got to film it this way. Oh. Yeah. But we are, we've got an exciting new product for you to pick up here. Uh, these are uh, um, tiny wire strippers, we'll call them. And you see the little notch in there? It was uh, um, our engineer over there. His name's Devin. He Hello. had the idea of <laughs> cutting these in there because his wire strippers are too, too coarse for the, the communication wires that we're so, uh, trying to fix. So it's something like 26 gauge and then this only go to 24. So these work phenomenally. So I think at this point you, you do what, four easy payments of 19.99? Yeah, but only because um, we start with high quality surgical steel sewing scissors, which I paid a lot of money for. Yeah. So, so that's what we will we'll, uh, work with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't get excited about the sound, guys. Yeah, it's not super great sounding, apparently. Hey, give her again. It's 
something I think is gonna happen, right? Test rev limiter. I, I, I'm, I'm it's excited for that. Kind of happens on most vehicles, I guess, that we've driven or whatever. But usually, yeah. it's my friends who do burnouts in my cars before I get to. Oh, you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Edit later. Yeah. <laughs> Every car he does. <laughs> So these are those stacks Tony was talking about. I'm gonna completely re-engineer this to have a much better mounting system and more stability. So we got some angle bracket here. I'm gonna, right now it's mounting into 18 gauge sheet metal, those four holes. I'm gonna re-engineer something and show you guys what I got when we are done. Tony and our secret somebody yeah. is pretty important helped get our car running. I did two important things <laughs> that don't seem significant. Um, I think we were a little too excited once we got running to do any work, so we just had a nice soft drink. Um, mm -hmm. I made this brace and this brace. Yeah. That is the start to our new seat mounts. So now I can work off of here. So right here is where the seat belt is. Here's a weld mat on the bottom. This is all tacked right now, guys. Uh, so you can literally have about this much room to get an extension magnetic socket in to pull that seat bolt out. The other one's going to mount here and then I'll probably brace up a little bit here and here and build new seat mounts. And Sweet. Then we are going to wrap that seat done. Sounds good. And as for my stuff, I basically have to make a bit of a brace in here because this is going to mount probably at an angle because we don't have quite enough room here. Throwing them out the degas bottle there. I'm going to cap one of these. Um, I just went to the cold side on the rad, which the rad we are running doesn't have. Um, the other one it runs to the hot side over here for uh, like it's kind of like to defoam it or to get rid of bubbles in the coolant system. So that's the that's going to go to the bottle. Like you can see there, it says bottle. Nice they labeled it for us. And then uh, in the back here, you can see that hose. We got to cap that one as well. That just went to a heater core that we don't have. Um, and then we'll have our coolant system ready to be filled and checked for leaks that it probably has. So here's my seat mount system, guys. Two heavy duty washers hold this side in with the original holes we were using. And then I got some heavy duty angle braces here. It'll bolt on there and bolt into there. So. I think that should work really well. And this is a lot more sturdy than the last system I had developed. All right, boys and girls, um, got the lower seatbelt mount down here. We're gonna put the upper one right here. I think Tony would say it's strong enough, but I'm gonna build a plate. Is it strong enough? Uh, yeah, <laughs> But I'm gonna build a plate anyways. It's gonna go right here, look like this with a weld nut on it. We'll build one per side and we'll be good. Hey, are you thinking a little bit using the uh, brain? Yeah, we're trying to figure out. So I pressure tested the coolant and I found that there was one fork we didn't know about here on the thermostat housing that um, would be for a heater box or for like a heater uh, core, but we don't have a heater core. Um, so for now we got to cap it but I made a T here for these two hoses that I joined, but I could, what, I, what we're thinking now is I could possibly use that as a degas, like basically to get coolant into the engine and then just do a barb here to, to connect these two instead. So I don't know, I don't know. We're, we're gonna try and figure out if, if it'll pull coolant in properly on that side of the thermostat. And I think it should because it's closer to the water pump. So it should work better, if anything, I think. I hear coolant is kind of essential for motors. Yeah, yeah for sure. We got it running there. We don't want to run too many miles before we put coolant in, so. <laughs> so there's the top mounting plate. You can see right there is where the top point of the seat belt's gonna mount. So we're gonna go ahead, get the seat out of this side and do this one. 
Not very often I show you stuff that I'm not happy with, but I definitely have an oopsie right here. And that is the driver's side seat belt. It's got to get repaired. Basically, I should have unbolted it from where it mounts in there, but I'd covered it with the welding blanket and I guess some sparks bounced around and got underneath. So yeah, we got to replace this now, which kind of sucks because there was nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, so that happened. But let me show you guys how this mounts nonetheless. So we've built a plate here and it shares this point. This, this is out of the Mazda that we took the seats out of. So basically it's gonna go in there. It'll bolt up here and here. We got weld nuts on there. Um, then this piece is gonna come up here to this point that I built. It'll bolt in. And the last thing we gotta do is find a mount point on the floor or on the seat base to move with the seat for this guy. Same thing will happen there. And it bolts in right there. We're gonna re just have fixed uh, plexiglass or Lexan type windows in the back. And that'll solve the issue of not having any window mechanisms. And the idea is to keep weight out of the car. So eventually Lexan plexiglass type rear window and side windows. Um, this will stay glass and that will stay glass. Well guys, it's 1 a.m. in the morning, typical for my shop here. I do my work in early mornings, late in the evenings. Hang out with the kids during the uh, after work time. Just enjoying some Dr. Pepper. It's gone. But the reason we didn't finish is because I ran out of welding wire. So this video is two evenings of work. Uh, Tony and I did on Project Snake Charmer. Um, We'll finish up those seatbelt mounts next time you see it. But for where I'm sitting, I can see exactly what needs to be done. And until next time, guys, we will talk to you later. Get some stuff done in your shop and have a good one. What do you think of those two cars, bud? Yeah, what's your favorite parts? What's cool in here? What do you think is cool? You want to show everybody? Uh, and then yeah. walk away and then... Oh, you'll have to add a <laughs> name there. Yeah, that'll be like intro secret, <laughs> and that'll be a secret person later. Yeah. <laughs>